Hello dear friends, this is your old Humphreys and I'm so glad that you came uh, to uh, this part of my service today that you tuned in on my message on, on Bible Reflections and I, I want to share with you just here in my home my study about a 10 minute message that I think is important for us and that is the fact that we need to trust in God. That's simple truth. We need to trust in God. We don't trust Him enough. Oh, we say we believe in Him, but do we really trust Him? We need to learn to trust Him. And one way that we trust God is to trust His Word, what He says in the Word of God. The Word of God is trustworthy. And I want to share with you, first of all, uh, a chapter of uh, uh, 3, right in the beginning of the Bible, of Genesis. It concerns the fact that Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, and Satan, in the form of a servant, came and tempted Eve uh, to do that which God had told her not to do. He had told Adam and, and Amy, do not eat of the fruit of the knowledge of, the, of good and evil, of all the fruit in, in the garden, and of all the, the growth in the garden, that they, food in the garden that they were welcome to. But that one tree, they were not to eat of it. And, uh, and the Lord God told them that they would die if they would eat of that truth, tree. And so it is that, that Satan then in the chapter 3 of Genesis said that Satan who was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made and he said unto the woman, Hath God said you shall not eat of this of the tree in the garden? And, uh, and the woman said, uh, We may eat of the tree of the trees of the garden, but of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, the tree of good and evil, God has said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now God had said this, and he had commanded it, and therefore to disobey God would be to rebel against God. And this is what happened. But we know that number one, the, the Bible is trustworthy. We find this is truth for, we read in section, several place, places in the Bible where, where God has shown us the fact and truth that it is trustworthy. Over in the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 12, it says the Word of God is alive. It's a living Word. It's not something that it was said and written, though it was written two old thousands of years ago. Yet it is still true today. And it's so true that it is as if God is speaking to you right now and to me. When we read it, it's a living Word. The Word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing asunder the soul and spirit, and is a discerner of the thoughts and imaginations of the heart. And so the Bible is a word of God, a living word. And by this word we will be judged. And by this word we will be seen as being right with God or wrong with God. By this word we will live to please God or we will walk in the world and displease Him. We must learn to read the Bible. We must learn to obey the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God, the Holy Word, the Mighty Word, the precious Word of the Living God. Over in the book of, of, uh, of Luke, we read a wonderful, wonderful story, a, a, a scripture where Jesus said, uh, If any man will follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life will lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. And so we see the importance of giving your life to Jesus Christ because it's the Word of God. God said in the Word that if you would lose your life, you will find it. But if you find your life in this world, that is, if you do what you want to do, then always looking to you and what you want and never thinking about God and what God wants, then you're going to lose it. We need to recognize that this is important. It is so important. The Bible says that we're to, in Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, in verse 23, it says, By the truth and, oh, hold dear to it. By the truth and sell it not. And also instruction and learning. By the truth and sell it not. Oh, listen, the lies are cheap. Oh, they're on every hand. They don't cost you much but the truth will cost you something. Buy the truth, but it's costly. It's costly. It takes humility. It takes humility, number one, to accept the truth of the Bible. It's saying, I don't know everything. 
I know so little. God knows everything. I need to read the Bible and to learn what God is telling me. That takes humility. The Bible says it also takes not only humility, but it takes faith to believe it. We've got to believe that this is the Word of God, that this Word will set us free. Jesus said, Hereby you shall know the truth, and the truth of the Word of God will set you free. And we shall be free from worry and fear and sin and hell when we believe the Bible. When we believe the Bible, we need to read it and buy the truth and sell it not. Buy the truth, it costs you. It costs you patience along with faith and a, a humility. It costs patience. You, you, need to, you need to recognize the importance of the Bible and how we need to recognize it as requiring patience. Over in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, in verse 36, it says, You have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might, be, uh, you might, be, or might receive the promise. For he had yet a little while, and he that said that he will come shall come, and he will not tarry. And so you need patience. After you've done the will of God to wait for the promise, you're praying for something. Maybe I'm talking to somebody now, and you've been praying about something, and you're about to give up. Let me tell you, don't give up. After you've done the will of God, wait for the promise, and it will come. It will not tarry. It will come sooner or later. God will answer that prayer if you keep believing and keep seeking to please Him. And so it requires patience to buy the truth. It requires faith to buy the truth. It requires obedience. God said He is the Lord God who is merciful to them that obey Him. We need to obey the Word of God. If He says to love your enemies, you must learn to love them. If He said pray for those who hurt you, you must pray for those who mistreat you. If He says give to those who ask, then give. You must learn. You must learn to obey the Word of God. If He says don't worry, you must quit worrying about things. You must seek God's will and God's Word and say, Lord, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to share it. I'm going to live it. And God will bless it to your heart and to your life. The Word of God is trustworthy. Not only is the Word of God trustworthy, but it is also very authoritative. Oh, the devil said in, in, in the beginning, as I read a little while ago, let me read this word to you. And, uh, and the serpent said to the woman, you shall not die. You see, that was a lie because God said you will die the day that you eat that fruit. Now, she didn't die the day she ate it, nor did Adam. They lived 500 years later. But something died within them the day they ate the fruit. And that's what God was talking about. The spirit that lived in them. God gave them a spirit. They were made spirit, soul, and body. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, Pray, give yourselves wholly, your spirit, soul, and body unto the Lord. And so we have, in the beginning, God created man with spirit, soul, and body. But when Adam and when Eve sinned against God, then they died, that spirit died within them. And that's where God dwelt. God is the a spirit, Jesus said. And that spirit, the power, the glory of God, the Father, dwelt in them in their spirit. And when that spirit died, God left them. And then they were on their own. And this is a problem that's facing men and women today. They're born in that sinful estate. They're born in that kind of a situation. And, uh, and they have that servitude uh, toward the world. And they cannot believe God and they cannot love God because they don't have a spirit within them. And that spirit is dead. And they're doing everything now just according to what they want to do. And that's what the devil told him. You can do it all your way. Well, all right, you can do it your way, but it's the wrong way. She should have gone God's way. And now, my dear friend, God wants to come in your heart and change your life and give you a new spirit and a new heart, and then He'll come in and dwell in that spirit like He did originally with Adam and Eve. He wants to dwell in your life and make your life count for God. I want you to look to Him. I want you to believe in Him. I want you to trust the Lord Jesus, that He died for you, that He rose again, that He's coming back, and He wants to bless your life. He comes to give you life more abundantly. The Holy Spirit comes into your life, and He'll give you peace. He'll give you peace. 
Oh, and then he'll carry your burdens. He'll carry your burdens. All your burdens. He'll carry them because he loves you. Oh, my friends, I want you to know that the Word of God is trustworthy. Believe the Word of God. Believe this Word because it is trustworthy, and it will do the best thing in the world for you. Believe it. Believe it. Let me close with this illustration. The great battle of the Civil War was a terrible war, and the great battle of Gettysburg was a deciding battle in that war, and it was almost, uh, you know, it was hard to tell which one was defeated or won in that battle, but, uh, but the South really faced a defeat because uh, Lee retreated with his army across the Potomac after Gettysburg, and uh, the battle was almost practically decided at that great battle, I mean, the, the, the outcome. And so it was that we found out through history that two Union soldiers found Lee's battle plans and turned them over to General McClellan, who was leading the North. And McClellan, the general, could see what, what Lee was planning to do, and, and he prepared for that battle according to those battle plans. And the South was thrown back. Now, praise God, we, we have seen the battle plan of old Satan. It's recorded in the Word of the Living God. It's recorded in the Word. It says, Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. It says, Turn your life over to Jesus and pray in the name of Jesus Christ for power to overcome Satan and he'll flee from you. And you'll overcome him. Don't be afraid of Satan. Don't bow down to Satan. Christian friend, you are stronger than him. You are more than conquerors through Christ. And you can win the battle now because you know the enemy's battle plans. Hallelujah. God bless you, my dear friend. Put your faith and trust in Jesus, and you will live forever. In God we trust. In God we trust. In the name above every name. Amen and amen.